What's an Olecranon stress fracture? Who gets them? And what do you do about it? I'm Dr. David, orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, and author of That's Gotta Hurt, The Injuries That Change Sports Forever. I provide education, information, and commentary on sports and exercise injuries, injury treatments, and injury prevention for athletes and active people so that you can stay healthy and perform your best. Olecranon stress fractures are common injuries in baseball pitchers and you can get it as other overhead athletes like tennis players, football quarterbacks, but it's almost always baseball pitchers because of the repetitive nature of the motion. And this is an injury to the tip of your elbow or the olecranon and as it mentions a stress fracture so it's a repetitive overuse injury. You typically see it in high school age pitchers, 16, 17, 18 years old, because the growth center at the tip of the elbow, that's when it's starting to fuse. So it's really subject to a lot of stress at that point in your career. Again, very, very, almost always related to overuse. Too much pitching without enough time to rest. So both the treatment and the prevention are pretty straightforward in that you cut down on the amount you pitch. Now in a preventative standpoint, that's where the pitch counts and the, the inning limits and the, the rest at the end of a season, you know, taking two or three months off each year, that's what will really prevent this. But let's just say for a second that your, you or your son has an olecranon stress fracture. How do you get over it? Well, short term, number one, you stop pitching. This is not something you want to pitch through because it's just going to linger and hurt more and more and take longer and longer to get better, sometimes ending up needing surgery. So you stop pitching for, you know, it can be as little as two or four weeks, but it can be sometimes longer than that for sure. But then maybe some ice, maybe physical therapy, you know, some variety of other things to maybe decrease the pain. But the bottom line is you decrease stress on that bone to allow that bone to heal. Now, in a small percentage of people, you know, people that have had symptoms for a long period of time or for whatever reason, it just doesn't go on to heal, occasionally these need surgery in high-level pitchers. Sometimes that's a screw that goes down the center of the bone and then you let that heal. Still takes a while, but that can be possible if you've had symptoms for a long period of time. Again, rest from pitching is the key. And as easy as that sounds, convincing you know high school seniors high school juniors and their parents and their coaches to rest and not pitch for six weeks or eight weeks that can be really really challenging all right have you dealt with an olecranon stress fracture or maybe your son and how did he get over it did he end up healing without you know missing much time did he end up needing surgery I'd love to hear your experience and honestly I think pitchers and their parents all around the world would love to hear what you have to say as well so below this video, share your experience and how you or your son got over it so we can all learn from you. And if you know somebody dealing with an olecranon stress fracture or other pitching injuries, please share this video with them so that hopefully we can help them get better. If you like videos like this and you want more information on sports and exercise, injuries, injury treatments, and injury prevention, subscribe to my video channel. Click the subscribe button in the upper right corner of the page. I record three or so of these videos every single week and they'll get delivered directly to you. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you right here next time.